You probably already know the periodic trends on the periodic table, or maybe you watched our periodic trends with Adam's video. In this video, I'm going to show you what the periodic trends have to do with ionization of atoms, meaning the formation of ions. The periodic trends are effective nuclear charge, atomic radius, ionization energy, electron affinity, and electronegativity. I'll be focusing more on ionization energy and electron affinity when discussing ions, but I'll also review the other periodic trends. Effective nuclear charge is the strength of the positively charged nucleus to pull its negatively charged electrons toward itself. Effective nuclear charge increases going right in a period and up in a group, which simply means atoms that are closest to the top right corner of the periodic table will have the highest effective nuclear charge. Atomic radius, which is measured from the center of the nucleus to the outermost electron shell, decreases going right in a period and decreases going up in a group, which simply means that atoms closest to the top right corner of the periodic table will have the smallest atomic radii, or simply put, are the smallest atoms. So what does effective nuclear charge have to do with atomic radius? Well, the higher the effective nuclear charge of an atom, the stronger the pull the nucleus has on its electrons, pulling them in, making it a smaller atom. Ionization energy is the energy required to remove an electron from an atom. In other words, it's the energy that must be applied to the atom in order to get the nucleus to part with one of its electrons. Like effective nuclear charge, ionization energy increases going right in a period and increases going up in a group, which again simply means that the atoms that are closest to the top right corner of the periodic table will have the highest ionization energy, which means they'll require the most energy to remove their electrons. What does ionization energy have to do with ions, besides the fact that ion is the root of the word ionization? Well, an atom with a high effective nuclear charge also has a high ionization energy, which means it won't easily part with an electron, so energy must be applied to get it to release the electron. Electron affinity is the ability of an atom to attract electrons from its environment and the energy released upon accepting an electron. Just like effective nuclear charge and ionization energy, electron affinity increases going right in a period and going up in a group. And just like before, atoms that are closer to the top right corner of the periodic table will have the highest electron affinity. So what does electron affinity have to do with ions? Well, the greater the effective nuclear charge of an atom, the greater the pull the nucleus has on its own electrons, which means it would also have a great pull or attraction for electrons in the environment. And if an atom that already has an equal number of protons and electrons accepts an extra electron from the environment, it will obtain a negative charge. Negatively charged atoms are ions, and more specifically, anions. So atoms closer to the top right corner of the periodic table have a high ionization energy, meaning they strongly resist losing their electrons. They also have a high electron affinity, which means they easily gain electrons, and these generally are the nonmetals, which are most likely to become anions. Now let's look at the opposite type of ion, cations, which are positively charged ions. The definition of electron affinity is the same, but now we're looking at atoms closer to the bottom left corner of the periodic table, and the closer to the bottom left corner, the lower the electron affinity. And atoms that are closer to the bottom left corner of the periodic table also have a low effective nuclear charge, which means their nuclei do not have a strong attraction for their own electrons, which means they also wouldn't have a strong attraction for electrons in the environment. Therefore, they're the least likely to accept electrons. Once again, the definition of ionization energy is the same, but atoms closer to the bottom left corner of the periodic table have the lowest ionization energy, and having a low ionization energy means that atoms that are closer to the bottom left corner of the periodic table tend to lose their electrons with very little or no energy at all meaning they lose their electrons very easily. And when an electron is removed from the positively charged proton, it becomes a positively charged ion, and more specifically, a cation. 
So atoms closer to the bottom left corner of the periodic table have a low electron affinity, which means they do not easily gain electrons. They also have a low ionization energy, which means they easily lose electrons. And these are the metals all along the left side of the periodic table, which are most likely to become cations. So, atoms that are closer to the bottom left corner of the periodic table have low effective nuclear charge, low electron affinity, low ionization energy, and large atomic radii, which means they easily lose their electrons or their electrons are easily removed, making them positively charged cations, which means they're easily oxidized. And atoms that are closer to the top right corner of the periodic table have a high effective nuclear charge, high electron affinity, high ionization energy, and small atomic radii, which means they easily attract and gain electrons, making them negatively charged anions, which means they're easily reduced. And finally, electronegativity. Electronegativity is the ability of an atom to attract other atoms or other molecules' electrons to form bonds with them. As atoms get closer to the top right corner of the periodic table, they have higher electronegativity, whereas atoms that get closer to the bottom left corner of the periodic table have lower electronegativity. So what this means is the nonmetals at the top right corner of the periodic table tend to pull electrons away from the metals on the left side of the periodic table due to their high electron affinity as well as the low ionization energy of the metals. This will cause the nonmetal to become anionic and the metal to become cationic. And because opposites attract, the negatively charged nonmetal will have a high electronegativity, which means it will attract the positively charged metal toward it, forming an ionic bond that will have a net zero charge. Kind of the goal of opposites attract, to obtain a zero charge, because no atom really wants to be charged. Simple as that.